Uh, good evening, my name is Leo Gilling, and, and as you know, I go across Jamaica talking to people, talking to everybody, anybody who wants to talk to me, and, and, and picking up uh, various interesting spots, uh, food, uh, you know, places that people don't normally know about Jamaica. This evening, I have the, 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 the pleasure of, well, sitting with this gentleman and, and, and chit-chatting and found out that he's a, 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 a great taxi operator right. around Montego Bay. And, and I, I thought, why don't I just sit down and talk to him and, and hear his perspective? Because I've never seen anybody interview a taxi man before. And he sounds like a guy that is really willing to talk. And so here we are. His name is Everton, but I don't know his last name. Murdoch, Everton, Murdoch, what's your name? Murdoch, Murdoch. Everton Murdoch. Murdoch happens to be one of the richest names in Jamaica, actually. You know, everybody will name Murdoch rich. <laughs> I am not. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, tell me, so where, where are you from? Are you from the Montego Bay area? I'm from Montego Bay. You're, from, you're, you're born and grew, so? Born in um, a little district they call Over River Orange. Orange? That over in a over country. Orange. And, listen, man, I know, mm -hmm. I know Montego Bay, that, that way up in a, no, no, no. a dumb freeze no, area. No, 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 not so far. I know so far. No, six, six and a half miles out of town. Oh, so, yeah, Orange is just six and a half miles out, mm -hmm. out of Westgate? Yes, yes, yes. Oh, okay. I think it it did farther. Okay, all right, all right. So, so orange is the orange man. So, how far is Dumfries from Orange? Ah, uh, Dumfries is another about five miles from Dumfries. Okay, we always, you know, when when we grow up, yeah, we generally see most of the people them from coming from the, the area. They coming down, go market, sell market, and then thing, and you know, uh, bus is always full of going the area there. But I've never been there. But it's good to meet you. Mm -hmm. um, and so tell me, uh, how long have you been an op a taxi operator? Uh, more than more than thirty years. Thirty years? About that. Oh my God! I, and and I'm I'm not gonna ask you how has it been because you wouldn't be in it for thirty years if you never like it, right? It's just something I like very much. Yes. It's not maybe not profitable as you'd want it to be. Yes. But it's as a job something I love. I love traveling. Uh -huh. I love to take people all across my country. I okay. love to let people know areas in my country that they don't know. How, how did being you... a taxi driver, you have to be a very honest person, caring, and understanding. How did you start out? Well, I started out as a youngster. I used to do mechanic in the earlier days. I'm a professional mechanic. Yes. After doing that, then get boring and all of that. I need to do something else. And we're into... We're, um, introduced by another friend of mine into the job well, after work i used to grow on in the evening and do a little of it until we get caught up into it so while you were doing being a mechanic, mechanic you, in the you, evening, in the evening you do a little thing taxi with a friend i use my friend car and do it yes okay until okay I get caught up to, into it and then doing it this the part that, that you enjoy is the, in, what you enjoy is the part where you get chartered to go across the country so all right so, I mean, we'll get to that in a minute so when you started, you were using a French car mm -hmm. to to run a run a robot. What 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 was it? It was a taxi. It was a taxi. It was a taxi. Mm, so red plate and all of that. Oh, so you had a regular plate. Red so, plate. Red plate. Red plate. So he, he, plate. he owns the red plate, or right. you, and then you operate this vehicle. Right. For him. Uh, okay. Okay. Like I'm helping helping me out because I would operate in the day, and in the evening I would like to watch you hours for him. Oh. Right. Okay. That's good. That's good. And and then. Later on, you went and bought your own vehicle? No, I started driving for people. Oh. More than one people, oh, oh many years. One of my favorite person used to drive with a gentleman by the name of Michael Walder. Uh -huh. He was a very good employer. Um, he employed me for a good little while. Somebody yes. who understand, caring. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. Many years, I half a service team until I realized I launched on my own. So what is the... I know that people drive for people. What is the arrangement? Well, well, in the earlier days, the arrangement is you drive a motor vehicle for a person and you would ask for you to give him a particular certain amount of money per day. Right. And you have a, a certain responsibility like maintenance. Right. Like you would tell your responsibility for changing engine oil, spark plug, this part, right. those little yes. things, certain amount of things that overcome certain amount. It would be their responsibility. Okay. It cost more than certain expense would be a responsibility. Oh, right? okay, okay. And then you would keep on care the motor vehicle. This what the expectation from of you. Yes. Keep the car clean, care it like it's yours and all of that. You know what I mean? And then, that's that's. If brilliant. you don't maintain it and care it, then the vehicle won't last. It won't last long. Your, your, your mm. family. And the same vehicle maintain your family. 
we have to maintain them. Okay, okay. And 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 so, um, how much, how, how long would you be on the road each each day? Ah, uh, about well, five days. You would work like Monday to Friday to your employee. Saturday would be yours. Sunday you would do any checkup and clean up and service of your motor people and ready to go work Monday morning again. Okay, so so during the week, Monday to Friday, would be your you, it's, it's, you're working for him and you bring him a certain amount of money. Right, even if you make more than his amount, it would be yours. You'd be, if you make excess on what he wants, then it's yours. Yes, because but then you for still have to maintain the vehicle. But then Saturday is your day. Whatever you work on Saturday will be yours. And then Sunday, if you want to work, you can work, but you, you, you clean you up normally, the car. You normally do maintenance on Sunday. You do maintenance on Sunday. And go to church or anything like that. Right. Like. Yeah, yeah, social life, right? Mm -hmm. All right. I, I, okay, that's, that's nice. Uh, that's not a bad um, setup and thing. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, how taxi man get the worst, um, you, you know, some get the best reputation while others get the worst. Here are some of the, the, the things well, that... Taxi man is like this, you know? Yes. Especially the traveling public, Jamaican traveling public, you see? Right. The moment they cannot get you to do things for them, for <laughs> nothing. Yes. Right? You're one of the worst person you can ever think of. Right. The moment they can get you to do things for them, for the liquor and nothing, you're the best person in life. Ah, that's the way it goes. That's where it goes. All right, so so um, w when you're, are you on a time schedule? Well, when I left home in the morning, like in the earlier days, I used to leave home like about 5 30, 6 in the morning. Yes. And like about 7 7 30, 8, the latest I'll be heading back home. How many, how many round trips will you do a day? For that, that you can calculate because sometimes you, it depends on the traffic. Oh. You can calculate the amount of trip you can make. You can come a day when it's traffic free and then you can make X amount of trip. And then another day sometimes you don't even make half of the amount of trip you would make on, on another day because traffic sometimes can buy out even half of your traveling your time. Your traveling time. Yeah, because sometimes it can take even an hour to do a trip, with, a, a journey where you would normally do at 10 or 15 minutes. Okay. All right, so when we say taxi, when we do America, we say taxi. Me call a taxi and I'm me alone in the vehicle and you have to carry me wherever I want to go, right? Mm -hmm. Here, taxi means you pick up people. You share, you share, you share, you call it share taxi. That means the, the car made to carry five people, uh -huh. including the driver. So oh. you drive and pick up and put down four other people apart from the driver. Okay, so that's so a shared member, taxi. Shared taxi. Oh. And also the same shared taxi can be a taxi you can use on a contract basis right. or a chartered. Right. Oh, okay. So so sometimes you get chartered work too. Exactly. And that and that's the one that you like best. That's the one I like. <laughs> and you can get a charter, last you for the day, that can cover your week expense. Ah. Or, and it will be easier even for the motor car and for you. Right. Because, because sometimes a person takes you from here to Negril. Park up and they don't move until when that person ready to move from where he, he takes you to. Okay, wow. okay, so okay. Rest for the car and rest for you. Okay, <laughs> I, I like that. Hey, for the people who are watching, there's a gentleman behind me. In, in, in my, in my, yeah, yeah, oh, Garth, his name is Garth. He might run a, run a, a, a fish boat there. So he might grill fish pan. See there? No free. Oh my God. Listen, man, you can't waste the fish like that, you know. You can't. <laughs> Oh God! <laughs> there it is. There you Dante, go. Dante, Dante, Dante. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, boy, eh? No man, more like what? Just show you coconut water. The man say more some coconut water. It's not. It's not the regular thing, you know. It's, it's coconut water. <laughs> yeah, go on. Now. Oh my God! I I had I had some fish soup this evening. I had the best fish soup that I ever tasted. Well, that's Clive. Clive Samuel is one of the best chef. Jeez. I can never think. He's a friend of mine, mm. and he knows how to make. Man, I tell you that the I've soup. I've been here most Saturday evening. Yes. To enjoy some of his fish. Oh, but we're not tell him where oh, we we're, we're, we're not tell him where Sammy is, right? We're not tell him where Sammy is, oh. right? All right, thank you, sir. Because we don't want nobody come pa pack up the place, right? Mm. <laughs> but when you need soup, yes. Jerk chicken and fish. Oh. Five sandwiches. Okay, okay. Used to be the owner of our restaurant. They call just jamming. Just, uh, just jamming. Yeah, uh, many years ago. Yes. You also known as a person who owns the restaurant. By the yes, name and was the chef too. And was the chef too. Yes, respect. And this stretch of farm, um, the Beach area. Yes. To holiday. Okay, great, 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 great. Mm -hmm. All right, and so so let's take us now. The other part of the the reputation that a taxi man holds is that them drive bad. Tell me about. Tell me well, about that. Let me tell you something. Mm. Not all taxi man is drive bad. Most of most most of the old taxi man them. Coming from like in the 70s or 80s, even 90s, 
are not drivers that drive bad. Most of the drivers that drive bad in the taxi business, the younger people who operate, who are approaching the system now. Okay. And some of them drove bad in the sense that they're driving a vehicle for somebody who give them a target to make on a daily basis. It's not possible to make. Oh. You tell a man to drive a vehicle and give you ten thousand dollars. Just an example. And you know before you give the vehicle, it's not possible for him to make ten thousand dollars a day. Okay. And that gentleman will do anything in the world to make that ten thousand dollars and to make something for himself. Uh, you, you are, you are responsible for providing your gas in it. Yes. The owner doesn't provide you with gas in it. You yes. give you that vehicle, you have to buy gas and you make the money to take to him whatever money he wants. Oh my whatever God. Whatever gas it costs you, you have to find it off your pocket. So, so, um, the, 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 the reason the reputation gets, gets bad because... Driving reputation. Yes, b yeah, because then they are the pressure that they're they're, they're pressure on that they're under mm -hmm. and and they sometimes drive in a way that puts people at risk people inside the car and people on the outside of the car and then what happened you see over the years we're suffering from a situation so our government governments of our world <coughs> keeping it in the mind of people that a hundred dollars can give them a lot of stuff she says not oh so the, the fees that they're offering to us to offer to people to offer the service you offer them the fee is worthless what oh. you are charging to transport people from one time to the other in jamaica it's useless yes right if most operator most operator i don't have better things to do than sit here yes i'm on my way <laughs> that's, a right <laughs> that's a doctor right there. That's a doctor. Yeah, so so most people have most people in Jamaica. Yes, I mean, um, they they to feel that when they give you a hundred dollars, you are It's a lot of money. Mm -hmm. It's not. It's not. Mm -hmm. Full time now, our government and our people, transport operators and agencies like transport authority and everybody should understand that. Most taxi operators underpaid in the fee that they're using to transport you from one point to the other point. But you understand how, how it is that not everybody can afford the bigger, the higher I understand, thing. but at the same yeah. time, if you have a business, then you, you cannot maintain a business, it will go down. Yes. It will go down, it cannot maintain, it cannot stay up. Yeah. Okay, you can't buy a, you can't buy a, a dozen Nesbury for a hundred dollars and sell it back for eighty dollars. Yes, yes, yes. I got you. I, I understand. Mm -hmm. And so that's why some of these guys out there are pushing uh, very know, hard, hard to make and the money. Packing that more people in the vehicle. Packing more vehicle people. Carry, uh, carry. Okay, okay, okay. All right. right, yeah, man, yeah, man. I understand. And then the expense, over the expense to maintain a motor vehicle. By this, for instance, we used to buy a tire like for four thousand dollars recently. Now that tire gone to seven thousand five hundred. You also buy a engine oil for five hundred four hundred and fifty dollars. That engine oil is a thousand dollars. What what was pandemic like for you as a as an operator? It was rough. It never seen any scene in my life like this. The pandemic, you carry three people from downtown to an entry, they won't get anybody else to go down. And then they tell them not to carry more than three. Oh. While they commit to carry four. Right. So you're doing a journey, you're carrying three people. The three people give you four hundred and fifty dollars. It costs you a thousand dollars just to do the round trip. And you don't get anybody to go down. Oh One girl and a guest give you a round trip, which is a thousand dollars, and you make four hundred and fifty dollars. Oh. So the pandemic was unknown; it was a last. It was a disaster for more taxi operators. Oh. A lot of people lost their vehicle. A lot of people who operate a vehicle, bank sees it. A lot of people didn't have a job. A lot of people couldn't even maintain their own motor vehicle. Oh my God! Right? Couldn't. So it was rough. It was. I don't. I hear government talk about pandemic and people get hit and music music industry and all that but i think the taxi operators it was the worst hit in the country yes yes because people does not know what we are going through and that they are part of it you're a part of it you know and then it's a risky and dangerous job yes it is you can take up three people and you don't return your life's in the fault because they just take your car from you kill you throw you away and go under the motor vehicle it's a oh risky job yes. very risky job yes. when you go out there you have to scoot in your passenger you have to make certain you you you, you Notice those people is bored in the car. It's like you do a high search to see that that gentleman or that lady doesn't have a bulge in his waist. And yes, if he bulge in his waist, you have to evaluate and see if he's a police officer, a soldier, a security guy. So you ask them that. You ask them if they're. You don't ask them that, but you have to you, you have to evaluate the person. You're yes. You and if you don't them. feel comfortable with that person, you abandon the trip. You abandon the trip. You may able you may be able to save your life. But then the the other side of this is that. Taxi operators are getting getting a, a big rap these days 
for 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 taking women and raping them and all in things. Taxi, are, are, are gen, original and genuine taxi operator does not do that. There are people who come in the system who operate that. There are taxi operators to do those things, and we get the blame for it. Mm -hmm. And many of the times, those people do those stuff. Yeah. When you caught them and catch them, they never even operate the taxi in their own life. But what they do, they use that they go around the covers tax operators to do those things. Because a genuine tax operator yeah. cannot do that because he depends on that to earn his dollar. Yeah. Yes. He depends on that to earn his dollar. Okay. okay. So yes, those yeah. wolf in the sheep who do that, they know they're not okay. tax operators. That's that. Yeah. That's okay. They don't have to continue doing that, so they just do that to make a dollars, rob people, take away their car, rape, kill, all of those something. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a risky, it's a risky job out there. So, so yeah. did you get to buy your own vehicle now? Yes, but because of the pandemic, it put me in an uncomfortable situation where you do, you do a lot to that will help to upgrade yourself to another vehicle. Right. Right. Yeah. You have to just struggle and keep fighting. Yes, yes. Keep fighting because nobody is, nobody is looking in your direction. Nobody right. see. I don't know. There's no system in place to help you. Yeah. You know, something ever, ever I, I, I know that you have to go. I know that you have a, 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 a customer to pick up. Yes. Uh, but I so appreciate you spending time with me. I'm, I'm sure the next time I get a chance to come down, I want to spend some more time with you. No problem. To talk about all of these things that we're talking about. Because people want to know. People want to know the side of the, uh, the taxi operators who have been getting a, bit, a bad well, rap. The part I have to say, my name is Everton Murdoch. My yes. number is 876-407-8931. Yes. Or 770 Five to eight fifty-four. Give everything a call. Well, Andy, just do that again for me. Uh, My number is eight seven six four zero seven eight nine thirty one, or eight seven six seven seven zero five to eight fifty-four. You can give everything a call if you need a re reliable taxi operator, somebody you can trust, somebody you know can be a caring person, somebody and you know if you send your family member to, to transport around, you will never have to regret it. So, what about you have an email address? Not now. Not now. Mm -hmm. Okay, but you uh, always get uh, Everton mm -hmm. well, on the phone number. Well, the 407 is a WhatsApp always, number. Yeah, it's a WhatsApp number, so we can mm -hmm. always reach you on the 407 no number. No problem, sir. All right. Thank you so much, Jimmy Bridget. Have a nice day. All right. Respect. It's Leo Gilling. I'm show him him glass. <laughs> Leo Gilling right here. On Cheers. The... It's coconut water, not rum. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Great, great. Oh, my God.